On the battlefields of Gettysburg, courage is etched in bronze. But once, these were men of flesh. And these fields became the bloody resting place for more than 51,000 soldiers. Their mangled bodies tangled with thousands of dead horses. So they'd be shooting at the horses that dropped the horses. <laughs> On top one of them rode General George Meade, commander of the Union forces. He won the battle, but little did he know that a key player at Gettysburg would someday ignite another war. <laughs> Almost a century and a half later, a piece of Gettysburg would find its way across the state to Philadelphia to a neighborhood that's seen better days. Very nice to meet you. you. Margaret Atkinson and her husband Hi. helped run the Grand Army of the Republic Museum and Library. There's so many things to show you. Because men like her great-grandfathers not only fought in the Civil War, this is where they brought back souvenirs from the battlefields. Among them, one unforgettable piece of history prized far above this chunk of a brutal Confederate prison. It is that post from Andersonville. More precious than the handcuffs found on John Wilkes Booth. Their original intent was to kidnap Lincoln. Even more coveted than the pillowcase Lincoln bled and died on. See that little strip there that looks stained? But now, the museum's greatest treasure is gone. He hung on that wall there over that fireplace. The artifact would find its way to the other side of the tracks, to a quiet, well-dressed street in an upscale Philadelphia neighborhood. Hi, John. John Rahm is a new executive director of the Civil War and Underground Railroad Museum. You walk in a door here and you're in a totally different realm. But even in this luxurious space, one gem clearly stands out. There's old Bali. The museum's most prized possession, a horse's head. But, but this is a horse, a storied horse, if you will. Because a man who rode Old Baldy was General George Meade, and the horse's story, an amazing tale of survival. Well, life was not easy for him. I, uh, things went badly for Old Baldy. Shot in the nose at the Battle of First Bull Run, in the neck at Antietam, at Second Bull Run, Weldon Railroad, and in Gettysburg, where Baldy took a bullet in the lung, Meade thought fatally. And I'm sure for George Meade that seeing his his horse lying there must have been like seeing his own child. But a couple of days later, Old Baldy is up eating grass. Wounded some 14 times, Old Baldy not only survived the Civil War, he outlived the general by 10 years. Like a cat, he had uh, so many lives. Which is why the men who served under me didn't want the general's horse forgotten. So when Baldy died here in 1882, they dug him up and cut off his head. And of course at that time they didn't have transportation so they put him back on the trolley car. Wheeling old Baldy back to this first museum where it was stuffed and proudly displayed until 1978. But when the museum fell on hard times, so did old Baldy. It had been a long time since it had been worked on by a taxidermist. Unable to afford the touch-ups, the museum's directors agreed to loan old Baldy to the other museum. We knew that it had been taken out uh, to be refurbished, but was never returned. So in March 2001, the Atkinsons declared war and filed a lawsuit. And Old Baldy would find itself in the middle of yet another battle, this time a tug of war between two dueling museums. It was very contentious because the issue became who owned the horse's head. In court, the Atkinsons claimed possession was theirs, but no argument could get them ahead. <laughs> it's a battle like David fighting Goliath. I don't think that they were a David and we were a, a monster in this situation, putting our weight against this. Finally, after five years, a truce was declared. Under the settlement, Old Baldy will stay put at the Civil War Museum under permanent loan. The best we can hope for is that they are going to have a placard with it acknowledging that it belongs to us. I'm not happy about it, but there's nothing I can do about it. But at least now Old Baldy has a home with a story to tell us all. This horse was amazing. He really was. I take a lot of inspiration from Old Baldy. We can take a few shots on the nose ourselves and we'll come back up and uh, be better than we were before. By no means was this old Baldy's toughest battle. His scars show us the real struggle. But it proves he's still a survivor, with much to share about a war and a country that's lost so much.
Carol Hahn, WHP, CBS 21.